Hi guys and welcome again to Creative Cakes by Sharon. By popular demand, today I'm creating a Claudine Wolf 2D cake for you. Claudine is part of my Monster High cake series and you can click on Draculaura, the Skull logo or GG Grant to watch either of those tutorials as well. I'll be adding to this Monster High playlist so make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can see all my videos as I release them. So let's get started. I have here a picture of Claudine which I'm going to use to help me with some of the details in her hair and her ears as well as my other templates and you can get a copy of these in the description box below. I have an 11 by 12 inch sheet cake here. I've also got my board, I've got a fondant roller, a sharp knife, a pair of scissors, I've got my offset spatula, a palette knife, an exacto blade, I've got a black edible marker, a nice fluffy brush, I've got four little lengths of wires, I've got some purple luster dust you can see there, as well as four little gold craft rings and I just picked these up from the local craft shop. I've got a few shades of brown fondant here, one mainly for her face and one for her hair and a couple of others to blend. I've got some black and white fondant as well as some yellow, red and two shades of purple fondant. I've got some water and a little brush here. I've got some pink frosting as well as some white chocolate ganache. The first thing I've done is separated my cake in two and I'm going to fill the center with my pink buttercream frosting. There's quite a bit of carving involved in creating Claudine so it's easiest to first fill the center of the cake and then pop on the other half on top. So to use the templates correctly on one sheet of paper there's a dotted line all the way down the page. You need to cut that along Along the line and join it up to the other sheet of paper and to position Claudine's face just line up the bottom of her chin with the other dotted line that goes down her neck and then I'm just going to cut out the template of her hair. Now using my sharp knife and making sure it's vertical at all times I'm just going to cut the cake around the template and remove all of the excess. Now I've just positioned the face part of the template on the cake and using my knife I'm going to cut all the way around the template and I'm going to make sure that I go a little bit deep, probably about a centimetre into the cake. It's not all the way through to the middle layer but it is a decent enough cut. And then once I've removed the template I'm going to make a series of diagonal cuts in the centre of where I've marked out Claudine's face. So I'm going to go in one direction diagonally across and then in the opposite direction. These cuts also need to be about a centimetre deep. And then using my offset spatula I'm just going to slide it in from the side of Claudine's face and gently scoop out this entire middle section of the cake. The spatula goes in fairly easily and the little squares of cake just easily lift up. So after I finish this you can see that I'm left with a cavity in the centre of the cake which is the exact shape of the template of Claudine's face. So now I'm going to try and create the cake to look like it's got volume in Claudine's hair. So to do this I'm going to cut out little wedges out of her hair. So you can see here I'm just putting my knife about a half a centimetre into the cake, cutting out a little bit of a wedge and then coming from the side of the cake to just scoop out that little section that I've cut into. I'm going to do this also for the top big wave of her hair and also down the other side as well. By doing this you can already start to see that we're creating a lot of definition into her hair and really trying to emphasise the fact that she's got a lot of volume and bounce in her hair. It's going to make for a much more interesting cake than if we had have left her hair all one level. I'm also now going to trim down her neck a little bit so that it's lower than the bottom of her face and I'm also going to carefully cut away the actual whole neck section because this is going to be easier to work on as a separate piece and adding it at the end. Now that all the cutting and carving of the cake has been done it's time to cover the entire cake with some of my white chocolate ganache and basically going to make sure that I cover all of the cake it's basically a crumb coat making sure to get into all of the little edges and crevices that we created. You'll find that if your ganache is a little bit runny it's a lot easier to manoeuvre into all of the tricky little spots. If it hardens up a little bit you can always pop it in the microwave to soften it up. So once you've covered the entire cake top and sides I'm going to put it in the fridge for about 15 minutes to set. Now that the ganache is nice and set it's time to smooth out the surface of the ganache. So I'm using here my offset spatula and some boiling water and once I've dipped the offset spatula in the water I'm just going to wipe off any excess moisture and use the hot spatula to smooth over the surface of the ganache. I really want to concentrate on all the edges to get them as nice and flat and smooth as possible. 
as well as the surface of the face, hair and sides of the cake. Now that all the preparation for the cake has been completed, it's now time to start on the fun part and that's the decorating. So I'm going to start with the darker shade of brown I've got to create her hair. So I've just rolled out here a piece of the brown fondant and I'm going to cover the hair in sections. So I'll start with this top wavy bit of her hair and before I lay my fondant down onto the cake I'm just going to moisten it just a little bit with my paintbrush and a little bit of water. Then I'm going to carefully drape over the brown fondant onto that section of the hair and the fondant should only stick to the areas which I've moistened with the water and then I'm going to carefully work the fondant into all the grooves making sure all the edges are nice and accentuated and trim off all of the excess fondant. Now for this larger section of hair, I'm going to create a little bit of a tonal effect in her hair. So with another little shade of brown, I'm just going to roll out some skinny little snakes and place it on top of my darker brown fondant and just gently blend it in by rolling it with my rolling pin over the top. And once I've created a few streaks and some tones in her hair, I'm just going to moisten the cake and place the fondant over the top. Once again, I'm going to trim the fondant down to suit the wave of her hair and along the inside of her face and trim off the excess at the bottom of the cake as well. I'm also going to use a little bit of the offcut to cover this lower section of her hair. Now to do the other side of Claudine's hair, I'm just going to repeat the same process. You can add as few or as many streaks as you like. I'm actually going to add a few more after we finish cover all of her hair. So don't be too particular or fussy at this stage because you can fix up or add to the streaks in her hair a little bit later. The main thing is to make sure all the areas of her hair are covered with the fondant and you've pressed nicely into the grooves and cut off any of the excess fondant. So now I'm going to create even more depth and contrast in her hair and using the back end of my paintbrush I'm going to start with her centre part and just press the fondant down gently in the middle to create that centre part and I'm also going to create a few more waves in her hair by pressing along the fondant in a wavy fashion. You can use the template as a guide or you could just add lip and add as many waves as you like into her hair. There are no rules here, we're just trying to create the effect of really beautiful hair hair full of volume. As I said before I'm going to work on creating a little bit more streakiness to her hair. Um, these would be like the tips or highlights in her hair and I'm going to do that by just rolling out just a few shades of brown fondant into some very skinny little snakes and I'm just going to adhere them into the little grooves that I created with the back of my paintbrush and just pat them down with the back end of the paintbrush so that they're nice and flat inside the grooves. Once again, the amount of highlights that you feel like adding is totally up to you. I went ahead and filled in all of the little grooves. Now because we've added the edges of Claudine's hair into the centre of the cake, you'll find that your template is perhaps a little bit squashy to fit in. So I need to go around and trim it down so that it fits nice and snug into the cavity. Now I'm going to work on Claudine's face and before I can cover it with fondant I'm going to create a little nose. So I've just got a little bit of a ball of fondant here and I'm going to squash it into a little triangle shape. You can use the template as a guide to get the correct size and then with the back of my paintbrush I'm just going to press through the paper so that I can create a little bit of a mark so I know where to position the nose. Now I've got my lighter shade of brown fondant and I'm going to roll it out to about 2 to 3 mils thick and this is going to be for Claudine's face. So I'm going to use my template and cut around that leaving a little bit extra to make sure I can cover the front of the cake where her neck is. Then with the fondant on my roller I'm going to carefully lower it onto the cake and gently work the fondant right into the edges so that it matches up to her hairline and then if there's a little bit overlapping just cut that off with my X-Acto blade and very gently with the bottom end of my paintbrush I'm just going to press into the fondant to create two little nostrils. Of course I can't forget to cover this little piece of cake which forms her neck so just using the same colour fondant as the face I'm just going to cover that quickly. Now to create Claudine's lips I'm going to take my red fondant and divide it into four pieces. One for the bottom of her lip 
and two pieces for the top and I'm just going to reserve a little bit on the side for a bit later. So to create the top part of her lip I'm going to roll the fondant into a ball and then resting it in the palm of my hand I'm going to press one end and then just keep twisting it until it tapers into a very fine point at the end. This is the bit that we're going to curl up. So I'm going to repeat that process for the other side of her lip and for the bottom piece of her lip I'm just going to flatten it out and round it on the edges and use the template as a guide to get the correct shape. Now with the other little piece of red fondant that I reserved on the side I'm going to roll that nice and thin and flat and I'm going to use this to cover the top lips so it doesn't look like I've joined two pieces of fondant together. So I'm just going to gently place it over the top of the two pieces of the top lip and carefully pat it underneath and just using my fingers I'm going to make sure the shape is correct. To create her teeth and her fangs I just simply rolled out a skinny snake out of white fondant and tapered it on the edges and popped it in between her lips. Now I'm going to use my picture of Claudine to create her ears. So I've got a piece of light brown fondant here the same colour as her face. I'm just going to break it into two and try to create a little bit of a triangular shape. I'm going to try and thin out one of the edges so it looks like the edge of her ear and then I'm just going to insert two wires into each of the ears and leave it aside for a little bit to dry. Now to really transform the cake we're going to start working on the eyes and I'm going to cut out the white section of Claudine's eyes from the template and just pop them onto a piece of rolled white fondant and cut around them. Then I'm going to trim the template down so I've just got the yellow section of Claudine's eyes and again cut out a piece of yellow fondant following the template. Now using a little bit of water in my paintbrush I'm going to adhere the yellow pieces of fondant onto the white sections of the eyes. Next I'm going to create the black pupils and I'm just going to roll out two little balls and press them onto the yellow fondant. I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the white reflections in her eyes. So I've patted two little circles onto her eyes and cut out two tiny triangles from some white fondant and adhered them to the eyes. Now to make sure I put the eyes in the correct spot I've got my template on the cake here and I'm just going to wet the cake a little bit with some water and then just simply position the eyes using the template as a guide in the correct spot. Then I'm just going to use the black edible marker to outline carefully the yellow sections of her eyes to just make them stand out a bit more. Now to create Claudine's eyeshadow I've rolled out my two shades of purple and I'm going to cut right around the very edge of the eyeshadow. And then using these pieces of the template, I'm going to cut out the light purple shade of fondant. Then I'm going to trim this piece of template down. So I'm just cutting around the darker shade of purple eyeshadow and then place those on the dark purple fondant and cut around them. Now using a little bit of water, I'm going to stick the darker purple shade of eyeshadow onto the lighter purple shade and then adhering these both onto the cake. It's a good idea to use your finger to really smooth down the edges of the eyeshadow and the eyes so that it creates a little bit more of a seamless join between the face and the eyeshadow. I've used the same technique to create the little bit of light purple eyeshadow that's under her eye as well. Now while the eyeshadow fondant is still soft, I'm going to take the back end of my paintbrush and gently press along the very edge of her eyes into the purple fondant. What I'm trying to do here is to create a little bit of a well or a cavity so that when I create her eyelashes I can actually stand them up in this well. However, before I make the eyelashes, I'm just going to use some of the purple luster dust and a nice fluffy brush to add some shading to the eyeshadows. You don't have to do this, but it gives a nice blended look to the two different shades of eyeshadow and just softens up the whole look of the cake. Now I'm going to start working on the eyelashes and I'm going to first remove a little bit of this excess paper off the template and cut the shape out of some black fondant. Now I'm going to create each individual eyelash and I'm going to do this by cutting out little triangles of the fondant. As I do this I'm just going to lightly press down on the fondant with my other finger to ensure that when I pull the knife away the fondant doesn't tear. 
So now to attach the eyelashes to the cake, I'm just going to wet the fondant a little bit and gently stand the eyelashes in that little well. I'm going to use the back of a paintbrush to carefully curl each of the eyelashes. It's very important to be very gentle here because I don't want to break any of the eyelashes that I've just created. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to the other eye as well. And you can see what a dramatic effect the eyelashes have on the cake. Now I'm just going to create the two eyebrows using some brown fondant and once I've placed it on the cake I'm going to use my X-Acto blade to cut into the fondant just a little bit to create the effect of hair. Now I can transfer the cake to the board and also attach the little neck piece under the face. Now the last little bit of detail for the cake is of course adding Claudine's earrings to her ears. So I've got these little plastic craft rings and I'm just going to cut a tiny little piece out of the ring and gently stretch it open and pop it into the fondant. So I'm going to do two earrings on each ear and then finally position them in the cake. And here she is, all finished, my Monster High Claudine Wolf Cake. Guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to give it a like and share it with your friends. Don't forget to drop me a comment in the section below and let me know who's your favourite Monster High character. And guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more creative cake tutorials. And as always, thanks for watching.